Hello and welcome to Program It Yourself in Java. My name is Chris, and in this episode, we are going to learn how to control the flow of our program. The programs we have written so far didn't really have any purpose. And no matter what we did, the program always created the same exact result. This is because our code is read and processed in sequence. We know that much already. But what if we want to create a program that we can interact with? I know you want to get down to business and finally write a program that has a meaning. So this is why today I am going to demonstrate a really important element in programming. And that is determining an action to execute, depending on the current circumstances. I always like to imagine these kinds of things in terms of games. Heck, I know when I started out, I always wanted to program video games and nothing else. So let's have a look at this concept from the perspective of a video game. Let's say you have your player, and you have to reach a certain amount of points in order to get to the next level. So how do you know whether the player has fulfilled this condition? And this is what we're here for today, conditional statements. So let's keep this example going. Let's say we have a variable that stores the player's current score. And let's say he needs to reach at least a thousand points in order to advance to the next level. So in order to check whether the player has actually reached this goal, we do this. Okay, so what's going on here? In this line right here, we created a so-called if clause. It starts with the if keyword and is followed by an open parenthesis. Then inside, we write the condition that we want to check against and close it with another parenthesis. And as you can see here, it has its own set of open and closed curly braces. So up here, we have the head of our if statement, and inside this curly braces, we have the body of our if statement. And everything that's inside the body of the statement gets executed when the condition is true. So let's go ahead and write a little message that pops up when the player wins our game. Now again, the cool thing about this whole construct is the fact that it is really expressive. You can read it like this. If the player score is greater or equal than the score goal, print out this little message here. And of course we can execute more statements than just this one. For instance, it would make sense to reset the player store once the player is in the next level. So let's do that. Now I know this is really abstract and there isn't really a way to obtain points in our game because there's nothing there, but we will get there in due time, I promise. You need to understand these concepts first, before we can go and create a program with purpose. But there's something we haven't taken into account yet. What happens if the player didn't fulfill the requirement for the level? What if his score is below 1000? Imagine he fights his way through our super difficult level, and only reaches like 990 points. He got pretty close, but that's not enough. Now that's pretty depressing, but those are the rules of our game. We don't address this problem in our program though. We could just go and write another if statement, right? There's nothing stopping us. And then we could go and display a different message. By the way, a shortcut for writing system out print ln is to type in SYSO and then hit control and space on your keyboard. Just a quick FYI. So let's type up a message real quick. So first we check if the player reaches the score goal. If he does, then we print out a message that he is a winner and we reset his score. If he didn't reach the score goal, we will print out a different message, telling him that he lost. So, just for fun, let's test this out. At this point, the player's score is 990. So this piece of code right here should take place. And fair enough, we are ashamed to humanity. On our second try, we do much better and reach a score of a whopping 1500. So let's see what we get. 
Uh huh. We are a winner, and we still lost. Wait a minute. What's going on here? How can we win and lose at the same time? Well, check this out. Our player score is 1,500. So it goes into our first if statement and checks if the condition is true. 1,500 is indeed greater than score goal. So we go inside the body of the statement and execute the code. We print out the message and reset the player score to zero. Then we move on to the next statement. Because remember, our code is still being processed in sequence. So we go to the next statement and check if the player score is lower than the score goal. And this is true, because we set the player score to zero right here. So by fulfilling this condition, we change the value of the variable in question and therefore fulfill this condition as well. So what do we do about this? Our only option would be not to reset the player score when the player enters to the next level. But that might not be our design choice for our game. Now, if we had all the game code right here, there might be an obvious solution to this. But for the sake of this tutorial, I am going to show you a way to deal with this kind of problem. I want you to take a look at what we have here. We have set up two conditions, and only one of them can be true at the time. Either we have enough points, or we don't. So we only want one of those blocks to execute. And we do that by replacing this if keyword right here with an else if. So now the code reads as follows. If the player has enough points to reach the goal, then print out the message that he has won and reset the score. Otherwise, if he doesn't have enough points, print out the message that he has lost. Let me put this up here so it makes a bit more sense visually. There we go. So now, only one of those two blocks gets executed, depending on the player's score. Don't trust me? Check it out. Now we are just a winner, and not a winner and a loser at the same time. Even though that's an interesting concept. Oh well. And for the sake of completeness, let's check out what happens if we don't have enough points. Yep, our program runs flawlessly. Now, there's no limit to how many conditions you can stack up. I could add a third one right here. But at this point, we don't really have anything else left to check. Another thing you can do is ignore the condition altogether and execute your code only when all the other conditions aren't met. You achieve that by just using the else keyword. Like so. Now in our case right now this doesn't make sense, because there are only two states that we can have. So either this piece of code, or this piece of code, is going to be executed. There's no other possibility. But we could spice our game up a little. Let's say we give the player a super cool bonus if he manages to match the score goal to the point. So if he goes above a thousand, he wins, if he goes below a thousand, he loses, and if he gets exactly a thousand, he wins and gets a bonus. So let's go to our first condition and change it a bit. Instead of asking whether we are above the score or matching it, we are only interested in whether he matches the score. In order to test for equality between two values, we have to use two equal signs. Like so. And this may be a bit confusing at first, but you will get used to it eventually. There is a difference when you use two equal signs and only one equal sign. Like I said before, the two equal signs check for equality, whereas one equal sign assigns a value. So right here we don't say player score equals 800, because that's not true. So if you think about it, at this point in time, player score equals zero. What we do here is we assign a value to player score, a new value in fact. So keep that in mind. One equal sign means assignment, and two equal signs means equality check. But anyway, back on topic. Let's change the message to respond to our new condition. So here we win by matching the score, here we lose by falling below the score, and in all other possible outcomes, which in our case is only being above the score, we win the game as well. So let's reflect that real quick by the magic of copy and paste. Better change out the message though. There we go. Now this might not be a prime example of demonstrating the else keyword, but I think you get the idea. 
the else keyword takes care of all the other cases that stand in relation to the condition in question. So let's say after we are done with the check, we have some more code going. Now I'm just going to put this up in the form of a comment. So let me walk you through this again one more time and recap. Some random guy plays our game and reaches a certain score. Now when our program reaches this point, it has three options. Depending on how many points the player got, the program will pick one of these options. The keyword here being 1. If the player matches the goal exactly, this piece of code gets executed. These two statements get completely ignored and we jump right to the next part of the code. If the player falls below the score, only this part gets executed. This statement and this statement both get ignored. And if the player score doesn't match the goal and he doesn't fall below it, this part gets executed. And then we jump to the next part of the program. Now this is a basic concept of if, else, if and else statements. And you will use those a lot in your life as a programmer. There is more to say about these and the concept of control flow in general. But alas, this is all the time I have for this tutorial. I hope you found it useful. If you did, Feel free to subscribe so you won't miss out on new videos. See you next time!